I want to do a talk about the elderly and growing old and things that kind of make me really upset and frustrated about the whole process. And I have a 91, 91 year old father. And I want to tell you about my dad. My dad raised me when I was five years old. My parents were divorced. And my father made the decision to take me and have my sister go with my mother. He thought that was the best decision. The boy stays with the boy, the girl goes with the girl. And ultimately, my sister went off to Canada and I stayed with my dad. And I'm so happy that happened um, because ultimately, I grew up with my father. He used to cook for me and everything else and the breakfast. I was, you know, a, a single parent. And he would kind of forget about me at times, but I was always number one in a sense that he would have a girlfriend who hated me. Oh, Elaine. But regardless, I was always number one. And she knew that. And I think that's probably why she hated me. And thank God they never got married. Um, but who is my dad? My dad, you have to understand, has ultimately been a leader all his life. He went to the Naval Academy. He flew planes. He ran track with some of the fastest runners in the United States at the time. And ultimately, he's been highly independent. He's always been able to do his own thing. And now look what's happened to him. He's stuck in a chair. He can, he can barely stand. He, he can get around. He's fighting desperately to maintain his independence. And pretty much he can do everything. And he's legally blind. So... What upsets me about this whole system is that we tend to like think that you know elderly are new since we push them off into into one of these retirement homes, which ultimately you're if you're going to spend around two grand a month, it's going to be shit. Um, and ultimately, uh, um, you know, you, you're you're basically putting them off, and and I've heard horror stories from them sedating them and everything else. And as you can see in my other video, my father can get upset and lose his, uh, his, his temper only because he feels like he doesn't have control anymore. Um, or you can go up and pay three, four, five thousand, or if you want care at your home, seven thousand dollars a month to have someone to come and stay in your house to take care. Imagine what you can buy with seven thousand dollars a month. And it seems like this is what we want to do with our elderly, push them off into a home. Um, and I struggle with that because I have, I have two boys, as you probably know, I have a 10 year old and a seven year old, I have a wife in Japan and they're without me and I'm here taking care of my father because I believe it's my duty to do so. And I'd love for him to come to Japan, but you know, he just doesn't want to do that. This is his home. This is what he knows. He built this house. He's lived here and he really doesn't want to leave it. And, um, he had a really tough time last month. With my sister here, it just didn't work out, so she ended up moving to Jacksonville and buying a house and leaving him here, and he feels like she abandoned him for doing that. And, you know, so I'm now here. I dropped everything to come here. I have a job in Japan, as you know. I do a lot of different things. But I couldn't, for example, take a job as teach teaching because I have one, t one company I've worked with that I've kind of screwed over two times because I've had to leave to deal with my father. So... um I don't know what you think about that or what your if you've got feedback or opinions on that, but that's my situation. So I am trying to find someone who'd be a great, great um, housemate for my dad and someone who I can trust with the most important person in the world to me, someone that ultimately I don't get along with only because I am a very, very very liberal, right? I get along with them, but when, if we start debating politics and stuff like that, we clash like titans. And, you know, and I've pretty much told him, and he said we shouldn't talk about politics because I'm, a, I'm Bernie Sanders and he is Donald Trump. And we see two different worlds when it comes to what's, what's there. But putting that aside, I love my dad dearly and, you know, um, I try... I try not to let him drive me in, but he doesn't just doesn't understand why I can't support Trump and why I can't be there. And I try to use the example. To me, Trump is Adolf Hitler in 1936, right? That is who Trump is to me. 
and that to me has to be ultimately, you know, um, fought against because ultimately if we allow someone like Trump to, to, to take away our civil liberties and everything else, we can risk everything. And I could see him building camps for Muslims and everything else. It's like, well, they don't, they're not one of us. We're putting them in a camp. So we just don't see eye to eye on politics, um, especially Trump. Anyway, so I just want to make this talk and kind of put a talk that, that, that juxtaposes the one that I have up, showing my father's, um, you know, manic behavior. And I am looking for someone to move in and be with my dad. So if there's anyone locally that could help out, that'd be great.